Okay, welcome to Lessons Learned Along the Way. This is a short video series where I get to get in the minds of various business owners and leaders here in the Twin Cities. Today, I have Kathy Hollenhorst with me. I'm grateful for the time you're willing to spend with me and some of the insights you're gonna share. I'm uh, excited about today because Kathy's one of my favorite people. She either just found that out or uh, she already <laughs> knew that. But no, um, just a lot of great things to share. Leads a great organization, create us here in the Twin Cities that, um, yeah, your tagline I think is interesting. You help marketing, digital, creative, and communications teams get more things done, which we're all trying to get more things done. So we're going to get a little bit of insight on how you do that, but to share a little bit about A, how you guys do that, and then B, a little bit about how you've arrived here. I would love to. Beautiful. Uh, Kratos is a marketing resourcing firm. So what we engage with are the big marketing and creative teams across the Twin Cities. Okay. And the idea of helping them get more work done. Uh, we do it in a couple of ways. One is we have 150 employees, 100 of them go on site, work as part of those creative and marketing teams. Different skills, different talents. Yeah, and for short yep. and long term assignments. Perfect. Um, but we also have a, a, a creative studio mm. which execute projects for clients. So think mini ad agency, but so on the execution. So agency for hire in that yeah, case. Project yeah. based, so kind of overflow work when, when teams need work done or some combination thereof. And, you know, we, we do consulting to help them uh, figure out all that resourcing. Okay. So, again, goal is we s chose to say marketing, creative, communications, digital. Yeah. That functional space, that's what we know best. Perfect. Um, been in business 21 years and, and uh, a great group of clients across the Twin Cities. Yeah, well, and that world is changing so fast, right? So I don't know how companies stay on top of it. So to have resources like yours available is, is I would think, a huge need. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me a little bit about your journey to, to being in the president's seat here at Kratos. Um, so what was your path? What did you do leading up to it? And then how long have you been here? And what's, what's some of the things you're working on? Well, I am a marketer by training. Okay. So, a uh, long career on the marketing functional uh, lead. Came out of larger corporations, uh, uh, 12 years total with Carlson Companies in various, in various roles, and that's where a lot of these uh, tools and techniques uh, really started with some sure. coaching I got there. Absolutely. Um, did some other things before that, and then uh, post uh, Carlson, though, I got a chance to go to Caribou Coffee. So I did product development and marketing there for a number of years. Cool. Um, transitioned out of there, uh, set up a consulting business uh, on my own. So yes. enjoyed that for a little while. Um, and uh, my husband then decided I should get a real job. So <laughs> uh, one with benefits. So i uh, got an opportunity to try nonprofit. So did a little stint at Greater Twin Cities United Way oh, as wow. the head of marketing. And then had the opportunity to come here to create us. So I've been on our board for 12 or 13 years. Okay. Uh, the entrepreneur owner wanted to not being yes. involved in the day to day, so I got to come in as a president and uh, also um, come in as an owner. So I've always classed myself as an entrepreneur. I like building oh. and growing things inside of big machines, and so now I get to flex my entrepreneur oh, uh, skills, and I'm learning on the that. way. I may steal that one. That's, that's you very please good. do. Good. Yeah. Good. Well, welcome. We're glad to have you today. And Thank look you. Forward to some of the things you're going to share. Thank you very much. And the whole point of this is to share a few things, you know, things that I like to say, uh, I wish I would have known then that I know now. And had I applied them in the beginning, I'd be maybe in a whole different place, but you learn them eventually. And uh, there's a lot of wisdom and nuggets in these things. And so you've, you've got a number of them that I'm excited to, to have you share. So why don't we start from the top? And, you know, one of the things you mentioned with me was just this, this learning about the difference between uh, you know, the corporate world and the entrepreneurial world. And what, what have you learned in particular? My line is you can take the girl out of the corporate, but you can't take the corporate out of the girl. And, um, and it's very true. And so uh, as I joined in, in running a company, also moving from a marketing functional lead into president, sure. which I take very seriously, different running the organization, um, a couple of things that were very different. One is the bias for action. You know, on the corporate mm -hmm. side, I'm really good at strategic planning and long-term planning, sure. and you plan, 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 and then you do. The bias for action here is, you. what I found, you take an action, you do, then you adjust, and then maybe you, the plan. Doesn't mean you don't have good business rationale for what you're sure. doing, but, sure. but certainly you move faster. Um, I think the other thing is, there's no air cover. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I was on the other organizations, my teams were larger, sure. so if you had one person depart, you had some other individuals who might be able to pick up some of the slack, and we're, you know, we're fairly lean, mm -hmm. uh, as most companies are. 
And so what I learned there is make sure you build the bench and make sure you have qualified individuals that can step in. Yeah, some your, gold in there. Into your key roles before, um, before somebody does a trit, as they say. And, and I think the other thing is that 80% is good enough. And I don't mean that we're, we don't make really good decisions. Right. But the risk is lower. Um, and you can adapt much quick, much more quickly. So take an action, see if it works. You know, don't don't need a five-year plan to make sure that it's going to work. Give it a try, adjust if it doesn't, and go from there. Uh, a second lesson, Kathy, you mentioned to me was tempering your D. Please <laughs> tell me what that means. <laughs> well, on the, are you familiar with the DISC profile? I am, yeah. yes. So one of those profiling tools, and so I am an off-the-chart D and an off-the-chart I, very low S and C. And basically what that means is, you know, I'm highly competitive, achievement-oriented, yeah. task, get things done. I do it through relationships, that's the I. Sure. Um, I don't really like to follow rules set by others, and I don't really uh, like to deal with a lot of details on an ongoing basis. So that's, that's why we like each other. Exactly. So. <laughs> um, so the tempering the D, because I'm such a high D, I, I, I have a high level of intensity. Mm -hmm. And um, when I came in here with the team that I had, it was I felt it was, a, unlike corporate, it was an environment that I needed to bring down the intensity a little mm. bit to get successful um, relationships built and, and achievement within that. So, Were there a few indicators that told you that was a deal? Or was that your natural just inclination to, to start to dial that back right away? Or, or did you have a few moments, <laughs> aha moments? Besides the frightened look on the faces of anybody who worked <laughs> with me. Um, you know, it's, it's the combination. I, I call myself decisively collaborative or collaboratively decisive. Yes. So I have a strength in being able to bring a team together. Mm -hmm. um, that's what made me successful in corporate environments. But I'm also willing to make decisions. Right. So it was finding that right balance. Mm -hmm. um, feedback I was getting from the team, um, I was moving us to decisions so quickly okay. that they felt um, not engaged in the process. Um, and in the system we use, it's everybody has a voice. You don't yeah. always get a vote. Um, ah. So um, you have a voice, not always a vote, and finding that right level to keep things moving yes. by making the decisions on the small stuff and making sure I got full, engage and full engagement and input on the really large impactful uh, decisions that had to be made. And the third lesson that you shared was putting people first, tasks second. Um, that sounds like a guiding principle almost. Um, when did you arrive at at that principle? Is it something you always possessed? What does that mean? Uh, or again, was this something that you learned along the way that you had to do in order to be effective? I was given the opportunity to go through a year-long coaching mm. with Change Masters as a company. Yes. Uh, back in a long time ago when I was still at, at Carlson Companies and it was a uh, discovery about what that intensity and D could could do sure. to the impressions that I and the perceptions of others as they were working with me. Mm -hmm. So the lesson was to, because I'm so task oriented, I want to keep things moving and I want to move fast and get things done, I can leave people in my wake. Oh, sure. Um, yes. So it's pausing in and uh, they gave me some tips on how to do that. Oh, good. Do you care to share one I or two of those tips? tips. <laughs> uh, you know, one is lean in, literally, oh. um, and watch your body language. Very good. And yes. Uh, they did some filming of me, and I got to, to see what I actually was looking like. One other e example is watch your face, mm -hmm. because what you're conveying or what somebody's reading might not be what you're intending. Okay. My example is when I'm listening really intently, I, I tend to close my face down, and my lips get apparently very thin. Um, but that's actually when I'm listening the closest. So I just oh, had to know that and watch my, my audience. But the biggest tool I had was called APOV. And, and that was the other person's point of view. Mm -hmm. um, I might have heard of it. And so when you build a relationship, I'd want to understand what are you rewarded for? Mm -hmm. What are you motivated by? And what are you fearful of? Yes. And I've done it one-on-one. -on -one. I've done it with my marketing team and IT teams as an example. Mm -hmm. And it helps you really understand and pause to say, where is that person coming from? Right. What's in my control to adjust how I behave mm -hmm. to build a relationship and help get a more successful outcome. Yeah, I love yeah. that, yeah. love that. That's a fourth lesson you shared with me uh, that I think is really cool, I love this concept, it's this being a human being versus a human doing. Yeah. Uh, where did this come from and, and how do you activate on that? What's that look like? 
I actually think that's 25 plus years ago and way, way back I was doing a personal branding exercise, who am I as a, an individual and, sure. and understand for all my wiring from little on, you know, I'm always on the go uh -huh. um, and I like to do a lot of things and I, multi I pride myself that I can multitask. And so um, what had brought me success in the early parts of my career as I stepped into more leadership roles was actually hurting the relationships I was having mm -hmm. because that human doing um, needs to stop and listen to those around us. So okay. I think it ties in to today's world on this whole idea of work-life balance, right. uh, particularly for women. Um, to me, work-life balance is a bunch of hooey. Uh, it really doesn't exist because I don't think any of us, male, female, can have perfect balance between what we need of our prof professional lives and our personal lives. I prefer the idea of work-life integration. Yes. And today's world, you're always working and you're always needing to deal with home things. Mm -hmm. So find an environment that fits what you need and to kind of accomplish and because uh, that's what I encourage for myself yeah. and others. Um, yeah. Although it's hard when you're on task all the time. Or there's an idea of, of work-life alignment. You know, making sure right. you have that right seat that you get to fulfill what you need as an individual, the company gets what they need, but that it perfectly is in sync of that yeah. fits both sides. Well, I think we're all, uh, and I'd be curious if you say to this, but I think we're all learning too as business owners that with all the technology and the tools and the things available in the workspaces, both in the office and out nowadays and even in homes, it's, it's become incredibly easy or available to work from anywhere. And so this idea of integration, I think, is, yeah. is truly where it's at. And uh, I mean, what, the ability to be quick to adapt to that or to be ready to support that as, a, as an organization, where, where have you guys gone with that? Um, is that something you guys consider on a daily basis? Is that part of how you attract people and keep people? I mean, is that, where does that fall on your... Um, I guess just ladder of, of importance or, or things you guys consider? I believe it is highly important in terms of our ladder. Yeah. And I would say we're doing average at best. Average at best. Again, of our 150 employees, most of them go work as part of client teams and sure. are driven by that work life. Sure. For, our, for us here, it's, it's finding that right balance of being able to have flexibility and work remotely yet still build culture and have team and be efficient in how you do what you do. So right. it varies by person and, um, and people younger than I am also expect and need a lot more uh, flexibility because yeah. I, I started working on a day you didn't have cell phones. Right. And so by definition you went in the office. So yeah. um, we're struggling, but you know, I do know what's important and we try to make it, uh, find the right people in the right seats. And once they, we know that they can do what they need to do, um, with that comes a lot of flexibility, but also you have to honor the personal responsibilities that people have. Mm -hmm. uh, people live busy lives, right. and uh, to be effective uh, working, you also have to make sure they're effective in their personal responsibilities. Absolutely. Great. What is the privilege of being president? This is um, you know, a lesson that you learned that uh, you actually wrote about online once, and I, and I captured that and I love the, the concept, but tell me a little bit, what, what does that mean to you? How did you arrive at that point of view? Having been a marketing functional expert mm -hmm. for, for all of my career, mm -hmm. until I got an opportunity to, to join Creatus, um, it, was a, it was a shift. Um, to take the responsibility to make sure the company still runs well. And I felt a stronger obligation to all of the employees that were working for us. Sure. We want to be profitable, we want to be a great company, and, and we want to do the right thing. Um, my line is that a leader without followers is just out for a walk by herself. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and what that means is any yes. of us, no matter what level you are in an organization, mm -hmm. um, needs to continue to work on their skills and their ability to be a good team member but also give good direction and be a good strong leader for others. Um, a couple of the tools on that um, come in the whole idea of listen more than you speak, right. which is hard for someone like me who is the high D, high I. Yes. Um, and then this idea of echoing, I've always used it where I'll say, I've heard you say X, Y, Z, is that correct, Kurt? Uh, echoing is also this idea of when you and I have shared something you would say, Tell me back what I just said. I want to make sure that we have clarity on what right. decision we just made. So Beautiful. both of those are tools that have worked as well. Good. I love that.
So, Kathy, another lesson that uh, you're about to share with me. Uh, <laughs> this came recently. I was in your office, and I saw this interesting sign. If you can see it, it says, uh, Need, Think, Do. Yeah. Um, and you shared an interesting uh, learning that you're going through um, about this. What, what, share with us a little bit about what that learning is, and, and how are you using those words to help you in your day-to-day today? One thing I found in, in working in a company like Kratos, our size, was you are in the business and you have to work on the business. Mm-hmm. And having some of the, my last jobs on the corporate side, it was more on the long range planning and things. And sure. so it's hard to balance both of those parts. And then you put in my kind of profile where I like to move <laughs> fast and get things done. And so I was finding that I was in other people's spaces ah. and had really strong people who I wasn't allowing to do what they do best. Mm. So this came up as an idea of now with um, my leadership team, and I think step one is surround yourself with really good people. Yes. Make sure you have a really, really solid leadership team. Yeah. Um, once you have that in place, now is when they yeah. join me, either weekly updates or just mm-hmm. when they need something, we start with what do you need from me? Mm. And that is, do you need me to make the decision for you? Do you want me just to listen? Do you just need to vent? And this is when they're coming to you, or yeah. is this in just in a, any any situation? This is, you know, anytime they're posing a situation, because the old scenario was, you give me the problem and I'll solve and it. You'll solve it, yeah. So now instead is the uh, dialogue around, I want to help it, tell me how I can. Got it. Once we have that, um, I get clarity on what they're seeking from me. Okay. We have a discussion. Then I ask, well, what, what are you thinking about this? Mm-hmm. And then finally, okay, now we're done. Now, what are you going to do? Okay. And how can I continue to help? Yeah. And what have you seen shift since you started doing this in earnest? I, the biggest shift we're finding is a lot more clarity on expectations. Okay. Um, Good. I, Good. Second thing is a lot less um, tactical work on my side. Not that I don't want to do it, but... Uh, you know, it's it's not me not taking on the situation which right. causes confusion because then am I working on it or are they working on it? Right. Um, and certainly a reinforcement of the trust and empowerment of the people who work with me. Yeah, and the, well, and the work's being done where the work should be done, right? Where the talent that you've brought in to do it can actually shine. Yeah. Um, I think that is a um, it's something I see across our network. Um, you know, probably more so than I'd love to, yeah. um, but it's a hard thing to let go. Of. You know, most individuals. Um, entrepreneurs, small business owners, even medium-sized business owners, the reason they got into the business because they had a passion for the work. Um, but they have to learn how to be that owner, right, in the business or the investor or the manager of it at a high level. And I think that's a critical piece of, uh, you know, learning that has to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's amazing once you let it happen. Uh, yeah. Kind of like a flower, it just blooms. Well, so, and also it's the other side. the right people. And right. other side of that is you should delegate but don't abdicate. Mm, say more about that. Well, I think it's the idea that as the leader or the partner, my involvement is still helpful because I'm that second set of eyes. So I can't abdicate all responsibility right. to make sure things are done sure. well or yeah, just, just having, them, having those controls yeah. in place and checking it. So mm-hmm. that's the other tool I always think about. Just don't walk away just because somebody else is doing the work and, and be available to help. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing is be clear. I'm, I'll do anything that I can help with, but... You drive and tell me how I can be most uh, helpful in this process versus taking over and dictating it the way I want right. it done. <laughs> yeah, that's good clarification. I love that. Another lesson you shared with me is around going with grace, uh, and this speaks to job transition and, and changes related. What what lessons did you learn there, or, or that you're willing to share? I've had the uh, privilege an opportunity <laughs> to pursue new opportunities three different times and um, reorganizations and you know I had joined Caribou Coffee and worked there four years great job sure. new CEO came in and and they build their own teams yeah. um, so I get a lot of joy now helping people who are in transition I have a little toolkit and just a conversation um, first and foremost is what you do is not who you are as a person right that's good. I love that. And it's hard not to remember that because it's an emotional mm-hmm. time when you're leaving one job and maybe yeah. going to another job. I think that's the biggest thing that I like to share. Um, and then some tips, you know, finding a job is a job. Uh, build your network before you need it. Mm-hmm. Um, people want to help, so leverage the relationships you have. Um, people who, other people who are in transition, professional resources, networking groups. Right. But then when you are networking and you're in transition, help them help you. So that is be crystal clear on, on 
with the journey that you're Absolutely. on, know my network, tell me how I can leverage the contacts I have to help you move to the next place. Yeah, and make it easy for me, yeah. you know, to help you. It's uh, yeah. I have a lot of those meetings as well. And it's, it's the, the degree at which I can help is literally exactly related to the degree at which they're ready to be clear on what that looks yeah. like. So uh, otherwise we won't burn a lot of mental calories because we don't have them. <laughs> yeah. So it's good, it, good advice. Sometimes you do just need somebody who's been through the journey just to listen Yeah. and affirm and remind you that you're still a good person. That's right. And you got a lot of skills just because you didn't fit there. Um, that helps. And the three things that I always like to ask is, you know, what industries are you most interested? What do you want to do? First, describe the ideal job. Right. What industries might have you already targeted? And what companies have you specifically targeted? Because sure. very likely I have a contact in one of those companies that then I can refer them to. So yeah. what I had uh, brought up to me um, as well, a uh, good question, and maybe this is part of your toolkit as well, but just, you know, what value will you bring that employer? So in essence, like, what are your superpowers? You know, where, what situations are you best equipped to be in and helping um, to, again, to just help those folks who are willing to network with you and for you, um, be able to keep their eyes and ears open for triggers in different situations that you'd be really uh, good fit for too. So yeah. um, it's good. I love that, that you're willing to help in that regard. Yes. So. And Please send any referrals my way. I'm always happy to have a cup of coffee with someone. Well, well you me. heard it here first, uh, and I'll, I'll let you know how to get a hold something of Something I really enjoy doing. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. You have a love-hate relationship with EOS, and, and we all know EOS is... Um, you know, very prevalent out there. I think it's a great set of tools. Uh, can really help you professionalize and organize a business. I, I liken it to uh, a set of business habits uh, or routines that are good to get into. But tell me a little bit about your relationship with it. Why do you have a love-hate one, and, and what does that mean? We have been using the U.S. system for, I think, eight years. We're one of the okay. early yeah. uh, deployers, if you will. Yes. We are self-implementers now, and. And I, uh, what I love about EOS is it's a system mm -hmm. to help us run the business. Mm -hmm. And I like to say it's the best system I've seen that helps you manage around Minnesota Nice. Ah, yes. It's a it's thing. Just, there's a lot of accountability built into it, yes. um, as well as the open and on the way that you go about doing what you do. Right. Brings in some of that transparency, which is helpful. Um, why we have a love hate relationship with it is um, my teams who are new to EOS, um, there's EOS Pure, yep. and then what I call EOS Practical. Because you have to apply the tools and adapt them in ways sure. that make sense in your organization. And for those who don't know, U.S. Pure is just another way of saying just buy the book, how, how it's prescribed to be done. Yeah. Um, so. so that said, you, you also need to have enough of the purity to make the system work effectively. Right. So you don't just pick and choose, I like this and this. So the scorecards and the rocks and, and the things moving forward. But what we find is... Um, when the team is so worried about defining the issue correctly or working the process correctly, mm -hmm. we lose the effectiveness of just helping us run the business. Sure. What I like about it, scorecard activities, every week you know if you're on or off track, it helps you focus, it drives that accountability in the system, and it allows you to have conversations in a trusting way yeah. that are getting in the way of doing the business. Yeah. Um, but it's just a system and a language then that helps everybody stay on the same page. Love that. We've got another lesson in here around Me Too, hashtag Me Too. What can you share about that? Well, I've obviously been a female leader mm -hmm. my whole career, and um, you know, I've been in, in my career path for a long time. And so I have a tremendous amount of empathy for any individual who is being um, not achieving their goals or being discriminated for any reason male, female, sexual orientation, uh, where they come from, where you got your MBA from, whatever yeah. that might be. So sure. um, I personally haven't directly experienced discrimination, I don't believe, or I, um, the, my career path um, was such that I was able to uh, achieve things. Yeah. Um, and I think the, the key though is uh, for female business leaders, it is different. Mm -hmm. um, I was told early on in my career that I don't play fair mm -hmm. because I behave like a guy. Mm. And I think that just means that I'm a good golfer and I, I know how to talk about sports, <laughs> but also I'm an aggressive, I mean, I'm a sort of personality. Sure. Um, so three tips I have just for anybody, but particularly for young Absolutely. women leaders. Yeah. Um, one is just find an ally, you know, look at a successful leader, female leader, if that's uh, what you're aspiring and, and watch and listen okay. and follow their lead within that. 
Uh, two is find those allies, male or female, who will help you on your career in the organization. Mm -hmm. um, be open to their feedback um, right. and be honest within that. Uh, and then focus what is on what is in your control. Mm. Um, don't worry about the stuff that isn't. Um, I love that one. And uh, be willing to use your voice and ask for that change of job or that promotion or or that pay increase. Mm -hmm. You know, I do think women tend to. Supposedly, we don't we don't ask quite as often, and so we just need to um, work hard, be the best we can be, yeah. use our voice when it's appropriate, and surround ourselves with people who can help us on the journey. Hey, one last thing for you. You got a monkey sitting next to you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help. He's slightly off camera. I'd love for you to bring the monkey forward. Um, what what is he or she represent? Uh, does he, she have a name? She, he, she does not have a name. Okay, so, so that might be something to, maybe to, I'll to call work. Him, maybe I'll call him Kirk from now on. Yeah, so well, there that. you go. But uh, well, at least it's not a donkey then, right? Yes. But uh, all, all, in all seriousness, um, tell us a little bit. What does the monkey represent? Why is it with you? Um, what are you working on related? And is there a lesson uh, baked in there? I brought the monkey and props today because... <laughs> Quite a few years ago, I read this book, and you can see it's the One Minute Manager Meets the Monkey. And I was recently coached to say, maybe I actually need a physical monkey. And um, I, it's a constant struggle for me sure. um, all my whole career, and even now. And it's a reminder for me and those that work with me to not take on the responsibility. So it's part of that delegation, yeah. not solve the problems for others. Got it. Just because I can do something doesn't mean I should and really focus on doing that. So this book is phenomenal to help you understand as soon as you try to be helpful, but take responsibility that somebody else needs to, it's, it's very unempowering for those that work with you. Um, it also fills your plate up and not theirs. Right. Um, so keep the issues in the right spot and work, be there to help and be collaborative as a team, but don't take the monkey onto your plate. I love that. Uh, from other people. There you and, go, words uh, to live by there. Yes. Words to live by. Kathy, thank you so much for sharing some of the things you've learned along the way. No doubt you're not done learning. Um, maybe we'll have you back to, to share some of the, the next lessons learned, but um, really appreciate the wisdom, the insights, the experiences you shared. Um, you know, for Kurt Terrell, for Allied Executives, um, I'd like to thank Kathy and appreciate her willingness to share. And uh, until next time, um, keep crushing it.